What's happening, y'all? My name is Troy, and today we're going to learn about the SensuCuddle command line tool. You will learn how to install and configure the tool, and then practice using it to perform some essential operations within Sensu. This lesson is intended for operators of Sensu and assumes you have already set up a local workshop environment. If you still need to do that, go check out lesson two to get your environment configured. As always, this entire lesson, including code samples, is available on GitHub as part of the Sensu workshop. Links are in the description. So you might be wondering, what is SensuCuddle? SensuCuddle, short for Sensu Control, is a command line tool for managing Sensu. It gives you full control of your Sensu pipeline from a command line environment. You can use SensuCuddle interactively in a shell or script it as part of an automated solution. The SensuCuddle tool is available for Linux, macOS, and Windows. Here's the situation. You've got a new coworker that just joined your SRE team. You've been using Sensu for a while and you want them to be able to help manage Sensu from their command line environment. No problem. All they need to do is install the SensuCuddle command line tool in three easy steps. First, configure some helpful environment variables. Next, download the tarball for your system and then unpack and install the binary. Let's get to it. The workshop repository includes platform-specific files that export some environment variables that we will use throughout the workshop. Most of the exercises assume you are in a shell that has these variables configured. So whenever you open a new shell environment, make sure to navigate to the workshop repository's root directory and then export the variables. I'm on a Mac, so I'll run source.envarc to get those loaded into my shell. You can verify these are set by running env and grepping it for the word sensu. All the sensu specific settings are prefixed with the word sensu. If that all looks good, let's move on to the next step. All right, now we need to download the platform specific archive from sensu's official release location. We'll use curl to do that and then unpack the archive using tar into a standard location. In this case, user local bin. Since we're on a Mac, we'll need to use sudo, although on Linux that shouldn't be necessary. If you'd rather avoid having to sudo it, you could unpack it to any location that's in your path. You might notice that the sensu version variable is being used to make sure we get the right version of the CLI installed. This is why we need to populate those variables in the first step. Since this command is a little complicated, please make sure to copy and paste it directly from the workshop documentation. You can verify that it installed correctly by running which sensu cuddle, which should show the location where you unpack the binary. If all that looks good, let's move on to talking about configuration of the tool. The first thing you need to know about sensu is that it has an API-based architecture. Everything that happens on the platform is done by interacting with one or more APIs. The primary function of SensuCuddle is to manage Sensu resources. It does this by calling Sensu's API to create, read, update, and delete resources like events, checks, and handlers. To configure the tool, run the SensuCuddle configure command. The tool will prompt you to provide the required settings. The first setting is authentication type. Because all access to the Sensu API requires authentication, SensuCuddle must be configured with login credentials. Sensu supports both basic authentication using a username and password, as well as OIDC-based authentication. For this workshop, we'll be using basic authentication. Next, the backend URL. Sensu's API is provided by the backend service. This URL is the address and port of the backend you want to manage. For this workshop, we'll be using the local backend running on port 8080. So the URL for that looks like http colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 colon 8080. Next, the namespace. Sensu resources are organized by namespace. This is helpful in complex infrastructures where there are many systems to observe and manage and different teams working together. 
For the purposes of this workshop, we'll only be using the default namespace. The next option is the output format. Since SensuCuddle can be used both interactively and in automated scripts, there are a variety of output options available. The default tabular output is a compact and human-readable format, which works well for the kind of interactive work we will be doing in the workshop. So let's leave this as tabular. Finally, we need to enter the username and password. The credentials we'll use for the sandbox environment are username sensu and password sensu. All right, you should now have successfully configured sensucuddle. To confirm, let's run sensucuddle config view, which will show us the current configuration. Looks good. Another way to authenticate requests is to use an API key. API keys allow automated components access to the API without the need for usernames and passwords. You can even use them with tools like curl or wget, which is handy in cases like CI/CD workflows where you might want to run an automated script but might not have sensucuddle installed in the environment. Also, API keys are revocable, making them easier to manage from a security perspective. Many of the exercises in this workshop will require an API key. So let's create one now. Here's the situation. That new coworker has a bunch of ideas about how to automate your Sensu pipeline with CI CD, but they don't want to use their username and password in the scripts they're writing. No problem. Just make them an API key. You can create an API key using the Sensu Cuddle API key grant command. This will create a user specific key that can be used in an authorization header of an API request. This key can also be used with any sensu cuddle command by adding the dash dash API dash key option. Let's try it. All right, so let's use the sensu cuddle API key grant command to create the key. But since API keys are user specific, we will also need to specify the user. In this case, let's make a key for the admin user named sensu. Since we'll be using this key a lot throughout the workshop, let's save the key in an environment variable to make our commands a little easier to type. The part of the key we want is the portion of the output after slash API slash core slash V2 slash API keys. So let's copy that part onto the clipboard. Now let's edit the .envrc file that we use to set up our environment variables. Just replace the value for Sensu API key with the key we just copied and uncomment the line. If you're on Windows, do this in the .mvrc.ps1 file. Save that file, and now we want to reload the file, so run source.envrc. Finally, let's verify that the Sensu API key environment variable is set properly by echoing it out using echo Sensu API key. Here's the situation. Your new coworker wants to set up a different CI job for each namespace, but needs a list of all the namespaces and users in the system right now. That's easy. Just use the list subcommand. The list subcommand is available for nearly all resources, including common ones like namespaces, users, and entities. Let me show you how that works. All right, let's get a list of namespaces. Just run sensucuddle namespace list, and you should see two namespaces in the sandbox environment. Let's also see the users. Run sensucuddle user list, and there should be a few different users in the system as well. Also, if you're curious about what other kinds of things sensucuddle can do, try using the dash dash help option to show a list of commands. 
This option is available on all commands and subcommands. One of the big use cases for Sensu is endpoint management. The infrastructure Sensu is monitoring can be listed using Sensu Cuddle, which functions as a real-time inventory of nodes. Nodes are represented as entities within Sensu, and they either have an agent running locally or are proxying observability data through an agent running elsewhere. So the commands Sensu Cuddle Entity List and Sensu Cuddle Entity Info can be used to list and inspect those entities. Here's the situation. Now that new coworker is asking about the nodes in your system, they want to know how many there are before they run this automation. They also want some detailed information like the host names and what operating system they are running. Luckily, Sensu can do that. To view a list of nodes, use the Sensu Cuddle Entity List command. Individual node information can be viewed using the Sensu Cuddle Entity Info command. And in automated scenarios, adding the dash dash format JSON option will output the information in JSON format which is a lot easier to work with than the tabular output. Let's try it. First, let's get a real-time list of entities by running Sensu Cuddle Entity List. You can see some basic info in this list, like the OS, but we wanted to see the host name also. For that, we'll need to run Sensu Cuddle Entity Info for a specific entity, which will show us all the details about the node. That's cool, but the output format isn't very useful in an automation scenario. Let's try outputting in a structured format like JSON. Just add the dash dash format JSON option to the end of the command to see that. There's a lot of information there. The ability to output JSON is especially powerful when combined with tools like JQ. If you have that installed, let's try extracting the host platform version that is running on the system that this event came from. Pretty cool. One of the things you'll hear us talk a lot about is monitoring as code. That means using automated workflows with configuration files stored in a version control system where it's easy to collaborate and coordinate your work with others. Sensu is designed specifically to enable this kind of workflow for monitoring. We call this monitoring as code, and the Sensu Cuddle tool is at the heart of it. Sensu Cuddle's monitoring as code workflow manages resource configurations using plain text formats like YAML and JSON. Managing resources follows these basic steps. First, resource configurations are defined in a YAML or JSON file. Then we use the Sensu Cuddle create command to read that resource configuration from the file and push the configuration to the backend API where the resource is created. Then we can commit the file to a source code repository. Later, that file can be modified and Sensu Cuddle Create can be used again to update the resource. You can also use the Sensu Cuddle Dump command to export one or more resources to a file at once, or add the dash dash format option to something like the Sensu Cuddle Entity Info command we used earlier, and then pipe the output of that resource to a file in a structured format like JSON. These features together enable Sensu's monitoring as code workflow. Let's give it a try. Here's the situation. While testing out their CI automation, your new coworker noticed that there was an entity running in the Sensu environment that doesn't have a YAML file in source control yet. They went looking for it because they wanted to add a subscription to the entity. To fix that, you want to save the resource to a file so you can commit it to source control where you can both collaborate on it. That's a pretty common task in Sensu and not hard to accomplish. To do that, we will use the Sensu Cuddle Entity Info command with the dash dash format YAML option to output the existing resource to YAML. 
Once we have that YAML file, we can modify the configuration and then update the resource using Sensu Cuddle Create. Let's try it now. All right, let's export the learn.sensu.io entity to YAML. First, we'll run Sensu Cuddle entity info learn.sensu.io to get all the details about the node, but then also add the dash dash format YAML option and pipe that output to a file named entity.yaml. Looks good. Now let's change the subscriptions. We'll open this up with a text editor, then change the subscriptions list, adding a new item called workshop test. Save that, and now we can update the running entity configuration using Sensu Cuddle Create. The dash F option specifies a YAML file to read from. This works like an upsert command. If the resource specified in the file doesn't exist, the sensu cuddle create command will create it. However, if it does already exist, that command will update it. Now let's verify the updated configuration. We can view that by running sensu cuddle entity info. Sure enough, we now have workshop-test listed in the subscriptions value, so we know that the update was successful. Woo, that was a lot of new information. In this lesson, you learned how to install and configure the Sensu Cuddle CLI tool, create an API key, and how to explore and manage various kinds of resources in Sensu. At the core of these operations is the Sensu API. In fact, you can think of Sensu Cuddle less as a tool that runs commands and more as a client to the Sensu API, making it easier to perform common tasks from the command line. These same tasks could have been performed with curl or any other system that can make HTTP requests. Sensu's API-based design is key to enabling monitoring as code workflows and allows for extensive customization via scripting and automation. That said, Sensu also has a web app. If you prefer browser-based user experiences, or maybe your coworkers are just tired of hearing your mechanical keyboard and you wanna give them a break, you can use the Sensu web app to perform many of the same tasks as Sensu Cuddle. That's because it also interacts as a client of the same APIs. On top of that, it gives you some powerful visualization and exploration tools that aren't really possible in a command line environment. We'll go into more detail about the Sensu web app in a later lesson. All right, now that you've gotten your hands on Sensu Cuddle, let's get into some more depth with what Sensu can do. In the next lesson, we will introduce you to Sensu handlers, which can do everything from generating alerts to transforming and storing metric data. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below or stop by our discourse forums to chat about all things Sensu. See you in the next video. brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Hey Troy, don't say these extra words here. That's a lot of words. I was like, it's also gonna be hard for people to like cognate about. I don't know why I said cognate instead of think. I like, I said completely different words than what I was supposed to say. Uh, in the, oh, I did that on purpose. I'm ready? I'm not. You should definitely not say any more words. Okay. And I was t thinking to myself, I'm like, this is dumb just quietly staring into the camera.